What's up guys, I'm Lee Morris from fstoppers.com. Today I'm gonna to show you a few tips and tricks that we use in Adobe Premiere to edit video as quickly as possible. The first thing that I wanna go over is actually the shortcuts that we use on our keyboards. Everybody in the office has the exact same setup so that we can get to the keys as quickly as possible, especially the ones that we use over and over and over again. When you open up Premiere for the first time, the shortcuts are spread out all over the place. And the problem with that is many of them require you to hold a button and press another. It requires two hands or it requires you to look down and move your hand completely across the keyboard. Our goals for the shortcuts that we use in this office were to put all of the major shortcuts under our left hand so that we don't even have to look down and we definitely don't have to move our hand around. So let me show you how we did that. First, you can come up here to edit and go down to keyboard shortcuts. And from this location, you can actually type in whatever you want. If I wanna type in ripple delete, you can see ripple delete comes right up and you're just gonna click over here and you can add whatever keys that you want to these shortcuts. So let's quickly go through my favorite shortcuts that I have reassigned for my left hand. We'll start with the keys A and S. So as you can see here, if I type in zoom out, you can see that I have that assigned to the A key. And then if I go to zoom in, I have that assigned to the S key. And what that allows you to do is zoom in and out of the timeline. And if you have ever edited a really long project, we do all the time, like hours and hours of footage, these timelines can get so big. And what you're gonna end up having to do is click on the screen, and slide this back and forth. And it's something that really will slow you down in the, in the long run. So being that we zoom in and out on our timelines all the time, we wanted to move that to the A and S keys so that we can quickly zoom in and out as we're editing. Let's go back to preferences. Next over from A and S is the D key. And if you type in clear here, you'll see that we have clear as the delete and the D key. Natively, it's set to the delete key, which is fine. That's very intuitive, but the whole problem with it is you have to look down to get your either right hand to it or you have to move your left hand off the keys to get over to the delete key. I also put it as the D key. So once again, with A, S, and D, I haven't even moved my hands. So if I wanna go here and highlight this and hit D, it's just going to delete it right away. And hit Control Z to undo that and then go back to edit. And if you guys have done editing for any amount of time, you know that ripple delete is one of the most useful tools. And we have set that to the F key, okay? Let me show you what ripple delete does. If I have a few clips right here and I highlight this and hit D or delete, what it's going to do is just delete out this section. I'm going to undo that, highlight it again, and now I'm going to hit F. So not only does it delete the clip, but it also deletes the space that that clip took up. Normally you would have to highlight it, right click, and then go to ripple delete. Again, it doesn't take that long to do that, but over time, this will save you so much time. Now, something else that we're doing often is we are going frame by frame, and normally that's the arrow keys. So if I hit right or left on the arrow keys, you can see I can go frame by frame. I don't like having to use my right hand to move to do that. So what we've done is we have moved that to the Q and W keys. So if you go back to keyboard shortcuts and go to step back, you can see I have that set to Q and then step forward. And once again, we put it here so we don't have to look down at our hands. We don't have to take our hand off the mouse while we're editing. We're just working and doing this while looking at the screen. Now, next up we have the E key and as you're editing, especially long videos that you wanna get through quickly, you're gonna to wanna to speed up the video. You don't wanna watch it in real time. And so what we have done is we have set E to shuttle slow right. I'll type that in for you just so you can see it. Shuttle slow right. Normally it's, it's shift L, which is just complicated. You have to use both hands to do that. I have it set to E. And what this does is if I start playing, this is me eating uh, food in Cambodia, by the way. This will be in the next behind the scenes season. If I start playing and I start tapping E, you can see it starts fast forwarding. If I don't hit play and I just hit E, it'll start playing slower, faster, 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 the more I hit E. If you wanna reset, you just pause it and then hit play again, which of course is spacebar. So, 
We're not using the mouse to go around and click on stuff and right click and say faster, faster, faster. Instead, everything is done with the left hand. And again, we're not having to move it around. So this is huge. If you're editing a lot of footage, especially something like a wedding, you're gonna wanna watch that thing in high speed. This is the easiest way to do that. Let's go back up to keyboard shortcuts and we'll type in track select tool. We have this set to Z. And I think this might have been set to another key. I honestly didn't know what the track select tool was until last week. And if I think about how much time I have wasted not using this tool, it makes me sick to my stomach. So we've set that to Z. Let me just kind of set the stage for you. Right now I have 44 seconds of footage in this timeline, but let's say we had two and a half hours of footage in this timeline, which is very common for the stuff that we're doing. And I'm having to zoom out and out and out and out. And it gets to the point where I have so much footage stacked on top of each other and it goes so long. Let's say that this clip right here of Patrick, I wanna add something in between these two. So I would highlight these and move it over. But let's say there's two hours of footage past this clip. What I did in the past was I would zoom way out and I would highlight the whole thing and then I would zoom back in and then I would move it over and then I would paste in what I want and then I'd zoom back out and highlight again. Well, there's a much easier way to do that and that is the track select tool. So now if I hit Z and I click, it automatically grabs everything to the right of this tool. Um, here I have like a much bigger uh, example here. If you notice like how many clips we have in this, this is only 10 minutes long, but still is a great example. And we have so many audio clips down here as well. All I have to do is click and drag and it grabs every single thing to the right of whatever I'm clicking on. And then I can, I can make moves, I can move stuff around here, and then I can click and then hit F to ripple delete and it, it brings it right back. Now when you open up Premiere, C is for the cut tool. You're obviously gonna wanna know where that is. That uh, is what helps you make your cuts. And of course you can come over here and grab the razor blade every time you do that but that's a pain in the butt. You don't wanna to have to do that every single time. So learn where C is. And then the V key is the actual selection tool, the mouse, um, and it allows you to grab stuff and move it around. Those are standard shortcuts built into Premiere when you open it up for the very first time. Now there is one more huge feature about Premiere that I literally learned like two weeks ago. And once again, I cannot believe that I didn't know this existed. Let's say that I have these two clips here on the screen and I want them to switch places. Normally, what I would have done in the past before I did all these shortcuts is I would have highlighted this, I would have pulled this over, then I would have grabbed this and pulled this over here, then I would have right-clicked here, ripple delete, right-click here, ripple delete, right? How many moves did that take for me to do that? And imagine that you know this was a huge timeline, like I said, hours of footage, and you have to every time zoom out, grab it all, move stuff around, it takes forever. Well, if you hold Alt and Control, you can click and boom. You can just rearrange clips by holding Alt and Control. And this is a massive time saver if you're just trying to change the orders of clips quickly, especially if you can't see the end of the timeline, because that's what requires you to go in and zoom in and out and try to find the actual end of it. So this has been a huge time saver for us because we are constantly flipping footage like that. One other really quick tip, guys. If you wanna copy something, normally you would highlight it, Control C, click over here, Control V, and it's gonna put it right there. Um, that's a very slow way of doing things. You can actually highlight things, hold Alt, and then just click and drag. And then you can put this wherever you want. And you can keep doing this over and over and over again and just you know keep copying this stuff. The other thing that's really cool is if you hold Alt before you click, you will only grab the audio or the video. So let's say for instance, I wanted to grab this clip that has totally different music. me eating, but I don't want the audio with it because I'm gonna put it in some sort of montage. All I would do is hold Alt, click the top and then drag. And what it's done is it's just grabbed the video part of that clip. All right guys, the very final tip that I learned quite a while ago and that it saves so much time is the idea that you can actually cut down the entire timeline rather than one click at a time. Notice here, like for instance, on this big timeline that I have, I have a bunch of clips. I have 
uh, audio down here, audio here, and then one, two, three uh, video tracks. Now, normally what I would do is I would hit C to get the cut tool and I would cut, 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 and then I have to come down here and cut. I had to make four cuts just to cut all the way down here if I wanted to grab there and maybe move something. And there's a much easier way to do that. If I back up here, if you have the cut tool or the razor blade, you can hold shift and click and it cuts all the way down the timeline. This has been huge for us. So now I can just hit Z and grab this and move it over. So I know it doesn't seem like I'm saving so much time. It's like a millisecond here, a second here. But over time, I assure you, if you guys uh, use Premiere heavily like we do, this will save so much time in the long run. Well guys, I hope that helps you with your Premiere editing. Keep in mind that you can move these keys around on the keyboard to wherever you feel comfortable with them. If you're left-handed and you keep your right hand on the keyboard, then certainly you should move everything under your right fingers so that you're not having to constantly look down at the keyboard or use both hands to do these shortcuts. I can assure you, if you put these into practice, it's gonna change the way you edit videos.